Hey everybody, welcome back to Reality Check. Now, every now and again, a video game comes along that just makes you want to shout, what the hell, science? Where is this tech in real life? You got it, stand by for Titanfall. Enter Titanfall, EA and Respawn Entertainment's mech-based answer to Call of Duty. Now for me, this is definitely one such game. But don't get me wrong, I'm in no hurry to see terrifying new ways of gunning down, blowing up, and punching people into mist. But mechs, like these titans, are a staple of science fiction battlefields, and the idea of having a giant walking suit of armor to zip around, fight in, and above all else, to protect the squishy pilots inside, is actually pretty exciting. So then, exactly how close are we to building titans in real life? probably won't surprise you that there are no titans or mechs in deployment in war zones around the world today. But what about in military research and development? Do we have a titan sitting deep underground in a research facility someplace, or at least on a drawing board? Well, this is probably the closest thing we're going to get for the moment. Not titan, but Talos, or Tactical Assault Light Operator Suit. Developed by the US Army, it's an advanced infantry uniform that promises to provide superhuman strength with greater ballistic protection. The idea apparently came about from a need to protect that poor first guy through the door in a combat situation. Now obviously this is just a promo animation, for now, but the US military have a huge number of partners involved in this project and are apparently aiming to have three separate unpowered prototypes of Talos available for testing as early as this summer. Now I say unpowered because the ultimate goal of this Talos system is to combine these prototype armored suits with powered exoskeleton technology. Tech like the Raytheon XOS 2. Weighing in at 95 kilograms, this wearable, high strength aluminium and steel robotic suit increases the strength, agility, and endurance capabilities of the soldier inside it. The robo muscle comes from high pressure hydraulics, giving the wearer a 17 fold increase in power. So, say you can comfortably curl a 10 kilogram dumbbell on your own. Well, this suit, in theory, should let you curl 170 kilograms while exerting the very same level of force as before. Now, while a left hook from someone wearing this would definitely be no laughing matter, these guys are not actually being developed for combat use. The far more practical application is for the lifting and carrying of supplies in a battlefield environment. The one major downside at the moment, however, is that this thing needs a whopping great load of electrical power. So much, in fact, it needs to be constantly tethered to a generator. The folks at Raytheon are working on a backpack power solution, however, so hopefully this hurdle can be jumped soon. Or just smashed out of the way, whichever. And you know what? This could be sooner rather than later. The army are aiming to field test powered Talos systems as early as 2018. Okay, so the whole Talos system is undeniably impressive, but it's not a Titan. So why are there no giant walking battle tanks actually in development? What's the reason? Well, now obviously I'm no engineer, but the main issue with this design, I think, is that large bipedal objects, while awesome looking, just aren't the best design for a gunfight. Being tall makes you an easy target, plus a real titan would likely be unstable due to their colossal weight and ultimately just not as maneuverable as things on wheels. Also, military research and development just isn't really going this way. Rather than encasing the soldier inside a protective robo suit, the focus is more on removing the human being from the combat situation altogether where possible and replacing them with autonomous robots. To see the real cutting edge of this technology, just check out any of the machines under development by Boston Dynamics. They are equal parts impressive and terrifying. For more on this, why not take a trip down memory lane and check out the Robot Wars episode of the What If Machine. Speaking of terrifying, what is with this guy's hair? Okay, now before you leave this video too disappointed, I've got one more thing to show you. Now you see, it's actually possible to get your hands on, climb inside and drive around in a real life mech today in the year 2014. All you need is $1.3 million. 
Say hello to Kuratas, created by Kogoro Kurata. This beast is four meters tall and can achieve speeds of up to six miles per hour. Plus, it's armed with a BB minigun and water bottles. Watch out, world. Kurata said he built the thing to bring to life the machines from his childhood fantasies. Daw. Okay, so that's nearly it for this week's episode. Are you disappointed by the lack of Titan-like battle bots in real life? Do let me know in the comments down below. Oh, and also, from now on in Reality Check, I'm going to end every episode by addressing questions or comments from you guys. In last week's episode on video game guns in real life, I included some footage showing deers being hunted and shot with one of the guns featured in the episode. Now that footage was from the actual promotional video produced by the company who make the weapon, which is why I included it in the show. Now, a number of you guys commented that you found this footage upsetting or offensive, so I just wanted to make an unreserved apology for that. I really should have thought twice about including it, really, and I will with things like this in the future. But thank you for letting me know, and I do understand that it's not really something you expect to see in a show about video games. Okay, well, thanks for watching as ever, and I'll be back same time next week for more Reality Check.